Superconductors, presented to you by Revo. April 8, 1911, high cameraling onus, a Dutch physicist was investigating how resistance varies with temperature in a conductor. It had just been made possible to liquefy helium, which meant extremely cold temperatures could be reached. This allowed him to cool mercury to 4 degrees Kelvin, which is when he discovered that its resistance disappeared and hence the superconductor was discovered. A superconductor is essentially a material that loses all its resistance when cooled below a critical temperature. In normal conductors, as electrons collide with the vibrating lattice ions, energy is lost as thermal energy. A higher temperature means more vibrations, therefore more resistance, producing a curve like this. However, in superconductors, after certain temperature, resistance drops to zero. The point at which this occurs is called the critical temperature. Looking at basic principles, power loss is equal to current squared times resistance. In superconductors, resistance is zero, therefore no energy is lost. Looking at Ohm's law with zero resistance, no potential difference is required to carry a current. This therefore means a current will flow indefinitely once set in motion, making it one of the closest things to perpetual motion in nature. Superconductors could therefore be the solution for energy loss in power transmission lines and could make electric generators more efficient. But why does this happen? Let's start by looking at the lattice. As you cool it down, the thermal vibrations decrease, and when you hit the critical temperature, these vibrations become negligible. As an electron moves through the conductor, the attraction between the negatively charged electron and positively charged ions of the lattice causes the structure to distort by drawing the structure towards the electron. This creates an area with a higher density of positive charge. Now, when another electron enters the area, you would expect it to repel the original electrons because light charges repel. However, there are many atoms that are part of this disturbance and this attraction occurs over many, many atoms. So the electron becomes attracted to this distorted area and they bind together forming a Cooper pair. Cooper pairs are very weak bonds and even thermal vibrations would break them, which is why extremely low temperatures are required. All these Cooper pairs behave as one big group of particles. The explanation for this goes into quantum mechanics. Briefly, electrons are fermions, which means they cannot be in the same state. However, when two electrons are in a Cooper pair, they can act together as bosons, particles which are allowed to be in the same state. Therefore, all the Cooper pairs go into their ground state. These Cooper pairs are bonded over large distances, therefore they all become entangled and overlap to form one large network of interactions. This behavior prevents collisions from occurring, leading to no resistance. This theory is called the BCS theory, the name coming from the three people that helped form it. However, this theory only explains why type 1 superconductors work. Yes, there are two types of superconductors. You have your type 1 superconductors with relatively low critical temperatures. They are generally pure metals, so some examples would be mercury and lead. Additionally, their transitioning state is more abrupt. Then you have your type 2 superconductors. These have relatively higher critical temperatures. They are generally alloys and complex oxides of ceramic. Uh, an example would be niobium titanium. One key difference is type 2 superconductors have a more gradual transition into their superconducting state, where they are in a mixed state. There is no perfect explanation for how type 2 superconductors work. One significant property of superconductors is that when they are making the transition from normal to superconducting state, they expel magnetic fields from their interiors, whereas a normal conductor lets magnetic field lines pass through. When a magnet is brought near a superconductor, electrons flow in the superconductor, producing eddy currents, which produce magnetic fields that mirror the magnetic field outside the superconductor. This causes all field lines in the superconductor to cancel out and repels the magnet upwards. Therefore, the magnetic field lines form around the superconductor. This is called the Meissner effect. Type 1 superconductors obey the Meissner effect completely, but type 2 superconductors partly obey the Meissner effect, which means magnetic field lines can still partly penetrate the material. This property is used in maglev trains. Due to gravity, there comes an equilibrium position where the object levitates. Overall, I have to say, Superconductors are among the most exciting materials yet discovered. With numerous applications, scientists continue to research them with room temperature superconductivity a key goal. Thank you for watching.